are you sure you're not dating a narcissist? That's what we're talking about in this video. Hey, I'm Dr. Melissa. I'm a trauma expert and top doctor. And in this video, we are talking about three things today. First, seven subtle signs that your partner may be a narcissist. Second, seven subtle changes in you that indicate you may be dating a narcissist. And third, what to do if you are just not sure. So first, let's talk about seven subtle signs in your partner that make you think you may be dating a narcissist. First, put downs. These can be so subtle, so passive aggressive, that they almost sound like a compliment, but they leave you feeling badly. Things like, I so admire your courage to wear something like that at your age. Or, I love how you just don't care about how you look or what people think of you. Or, it must be nice to be right all the time. Or, if only everyone in the world was as smart as you are. Second, they tend to be controlling. Narcissists and toxic people love power and control that gives them narcissistic supply. And this can be subtle because it can be masked as love. For example, narcissists can tell you that you're not allowed to go out with your friends on a particular night because they're worried about your safety or you're not allowed to drive to a certain part of town without them just to make sure everything is okay. Or even that you're not allowed to continue certain friendships because they don't think that they're good for you. They're, they lack accountability. This can sometimes be really hard to pick up, but you'll notice over time that nothing is ever their fault. They're always late because of some idiot on the freeway or some stupid train that did whatever or some truck had blocked them in and they couldn't get out of their driveway. They have an excuse for why their project is not done at work on time or why they forgot to pick up the milk on their way home or why they went into Starbucks to get the two of you drinks and they forgot your order. It's not just that you don't hear I'm sorry come out of their mouth regularly, unless they're a master of a false apology. It's that they don't take accountability or responsibility for anything. Everything is someone else's fault. Number four are small, almost insignificant lies. They lie about itty bitty things that you would think, why would anyone even lie about that? They lie about whether or not they mailed something. They lie about whether or not they made a phone call to resolve a problem. They lie about what they ate for lunch. They lie about why they were late. They lie about these tiny insignificant things that when you think about them one by one, you think, well, that's not really that big of a deal. But even though it is subtle, it is a sign of a much larger problem. Number five, they future fake. And this can also be really subtle. This is the like giving you for your birthday a promise of going somewhere and then never going. Or when you're in the midst of a big argument to deflect from discussing the topic at hand, talking about the vacation they'd like to take you on next summer and getting you distracted with that. The vacation that likely will never happen. And it was purely a way to end that conversation that they that they wanted to avoid. Number six, sabotage. This one you often don't see until it's way too late. You know, things, something accidentally being spilled on your brand new sweater or accidentally deleting important files off of your computer, accidentally dinging your car on their way out through your garage accidentally breaking one of your favorite objects. And because they focus on plausible deniability, 
it seems like it could have been an accident. You may not notice for years or for decades that they are actually sabotaging you. And the seventh very subtle sign that you may be dating a narcissist is they try to help you by telling you what's wrong with you. It'll, be, it'll go something like this. Like, you know, I know that you are really working on your leadership skills so that you can apply for that promotion. I just want you to know people think you're a little shrill. Or... I really think you should pass on that ice cream because I know you want to take care of yourself and, and fit in your clothes. So tell me how many of those resonate? Drop a comment in the chat. For some of you, I'm guessing it's all seven. Okay, number two, let's talk about seven subtle signs in you that you may be with a narcissist. First, you find that you're often confused. You're confused about what is going on in your life. Here you remember having a conversation with this person and they say it didn't ever happen. You remember putting your keys in a certain place, but your keys are not there. You feel like you approached a conversation very calmly, very cleanly, and they're backing off saying that you're yelling. It's like you're in an alternate universe. And that confusion is a classic sign. Second, you're exhausted all of the time. Chronically drained, chronically depleted, chronically exhausted because you are giving to someone who is like an energy vampire. They are sucking the life right out of you. Number three, you notice that you've become less assertive less likely to stand up for yourself. You've noticed that you've started walking on eggshells, maybe avoiding certain topics of conversation because it's just not worth it to go through all of the drama. Number four, you notice you start having trouble in other relationships. All of a sudden, you're having challenges with your best friend or your sister or your mom challenges that you've never had before and you can't really put your finger on why. Now, by the way, a narcissist or toxic person will be sure to point out that the common denominator is you and that you must be the problem. Number five, you feel worse about yourself after you've been with them. Here, maybe they do something kind of nice like bringing you chicken noodle soup when you're sick, but they leave in your left feeling worse than if they hadn't come at all. Or maybe they comment on your appearance and it sort of sounds like compliments, but you feel worse and you wish you'd never asked. Or maybe you run through, a, a, you do a practice run through a speech for their feedback and you walk away feeling like, oh my gosh, that was a mistake. I feel worse and less confident than I was before. Number six, you start having all kinds of health problems, all kinds of injuries. The narcissist or toxic person has not directly done anything to you. It seems like it's a fluke. You know, maybe you sprain your ankle while running and you injure your shoulder when you, you know, accidentally fell doing something in the yard. Maybe you get one cold after the next. They seem to have no rhyme or reason to them but the frequency of injuries and illnesses is far higher than it was prior to this relationship. And number seven is that you are unsure of yourself, far more indecisive. Maybe you can't decide what to wear. You can't decide what to order at a restaurant. You can't decide where you wanna go on vacation. You are almost terrified of making a mistake, of making the wrong decision and it creates this uncertainty and this self-doubt that is new or worsened since the beginning of this relationship. Okay, and the third question that we're going to address is what do you do if you're just not sure? What do you do if you just aren't sure if your new partner is a narcissist? And this one is actually far easier than you think because whether or not 
their diagnosable narcissist is actually irrelevant. Here's what I mean. Say your partner is lying to you. They may or may not be a narcissist. Narcissists lie, non-narcissists lie. All you need to do is decide if you are willing to be with a partner who lies to you, who you can't trust. If the answer is no, it's irrelevant whether or not they have a diagnosis. Say your partner puts you down, makes you feel badly about yourself, makes you feel like you're broken or there's something wrong with you. Again, they may be a narcissist, they may not. Does it matter? The only question to ask is, are you willing to be with someone who makes you feel badly about yourself, who puts you down? When you look at it through that lens, the question of whether or not they're a narcissist actually becomes irrelevant. And if you attract one narcissist after the next into your life and you want to break that cycle, click the link in the description and I'll help you. I'm Dr. Melissa and I'll see you in the next video.